In this video, we're going to cover the SMC Measurement and Verification Kit, or MNV Kit. One good use of the MNV Kit is to capture energy performance data, which can allow you to compare the existing induction motor's operational efficiency to the SMC Smart Motor System. The SMC MNV Kit is comprised of a weatherproof enclosure, which comes with an SMC supervisor, a wireless modem, a power meter, three current transducers, and a Modbus communications cable. The first step in installing the MNV kit is deciding on the location to mount the weatherproof enclosure. Look around the unit and find a location that is suitable for the size of the panel and which will not prevent access to removing unit panels for normal servicing. The best location is normally next to the main power disconnect or near the unit control panel. Assuming there is ample room, mount the waterproof enclosure using the four external mounting tabs, which are included with the panel. You can use a through mount conduit and run the wiring that will be required for the controls. If mounting the SMC enclosure next to the main power disconnect or unit control panel is not possible, you can mount it on top of an economizer hood and run the wiring into the control panel. Or if there is not enough room in the unit, you may have to mount it externally and use a seal tight conduit to connect it to the HVAC unit. Now that you've got the panel mounted, you want to pull out the black and white wires, which is the 24 volt power supply to the SMC panel. Simply run the black and white wires to the unit transformer or to the terminal block on the unit. Once you've run the 24 volt power supply for the weatherproof enclosure panel to the unit, simply terminate it on the C and the R terminals to power up the panel. Now you're ready to install the power meter. You need to find a location to mount this. Typically the best spot is in the HVAC unit's control panel, or you may consider mounting it in the fan section. On a smaller unit, you might have to mount it vertically. You can mount it either vertically or horizontally. It doesn't matter as long as you have ample room to run the control wiring on both sides. On the right hand side, you have terminals for the A, B, and C phases of power, which need to be connected to the line voltage. On the left hand side, you have terminals for A, B, and C phases, which need to be connected to the CTs. Please note that the line voltage connected to line A must have the CT connected to that same line voltage. You can't mismatch the line voltage connections and the CTs or the meter will not read properly. The phases have to be correlated to A phase, B phase, and C phase. Also make sure that when you terminate the wires, you have white on top of black for each set of CTs and so on. White on top, black on bottom, white on top, black on bottom. Now that you've got line voltage connected to the power meter, you've got A, B, and C phase, which are black, yellow, and blue. These are the colors that the unit manufacturer uses to connect to the A, B, and C phase. Next, we're going to connect the CTs to the other side of the meter. Once you have identified the three line voltage wires that are going to the existing induction fan motor, the black, yellow, and blue, the next step is to install the CTs. Remember that the CTs must be installed in the same order as the A phase, B phase, and C power input to the meter. Also, please note that these CTs are directionally sensitive. So make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the power source from the HVAC unit. The next step is to route the wires from the CTs over to the meter, which we mounted in the control panel. First, simply route the wires through the existing conduit channel for the unit. Then mount the first A phase CT on the power wire for phase A, which is the black on this unit. Again, making sure the arrow on the CT is pointing towards the power source of the unit. Repeat this step with the B and C phase CTs. Make a point to separate the CTs by a few inches so you avoid cross-contamination of magnetic fields. Next, run the wire across the control panel to the power meter. Finally, connect it to the A, B, and C phase terminals Again, white on top and black on the bottom. The next step is to connect the Modbus communications cable to the power meter and then to the SMC supervisor within the enclosure. Connect the wires to the negative, positive, and common. The wires provided in the Modbus cable are marked positive, negative, and common for easy reference. Run that Modbus cable through the same conduit that you ran the 24 volt power supply through earlier. Land the Modbus wires on the D1 positive and negative terminals and on a common terminal. Again, the wires are labeled so it's fairly easy to get them lined up to a positive and negative on the right terminals. If you have to mount the SMC supervisor remotely and have to use a flex conduit, 
You might want to run a second Modbus cable for the SMC motor controller, so you don't have to pull wire a second time. Once you have completed these steps, apply power to the HVAC unit. The LED for the communication should be pulsating green, indicating it's communicating to the SMC supervisor. When the fan motor is running, the three LEDs on the meter should be pulsating green. This is a normal condition when the fan is running and the CTs are reading the power use of the motor. Once the power meter is hooked up and reading correctly, and you've got power to the SMC supervisor, contact the SMC solutions team to confirm that the information from the meter is being fed to the cloud and that you're receiving the data on the induction motor.